Welcome to this story time. My name is Disha Esther and I'm going to take you through this story. Thank you very much. Today we are going to learn about a great king. A great what? King. A great king and his name was King Nebuchadnezzar. King who? Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was a great ruler. He was a king who was well known in the city of Babylon. Okay? Now one time the king was sleeping. He was sleeping at night and he had a dream. The king woke up and he had forgotten about the dream. But the dream he had was very troubling. The king was worried because he had forgotten the dream. He called one of his men, one of his men, commander-in-chief. His name was Arioch. He told him, Arioch, come. Can you go and call the magicians, the fortune tellers, and all the wise, the, all the wise men in Babylon? So Arioch marched. He ran. He went and called all the magicians, all the fortune tellers, all the wise men. He told them, can you please hurry up? The king is calling you because there is something he would like to ask you. Now when the wise men come into the palace, the king asks them, I had a dream, but I've forgotten all about my dream. Can you please tell me my dream? And all the wise men were troubled. They told the king, but how can we tell what you dreamt about? King Nebuchadnezzar told them, if you want your life, I need to know my dream. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can anyone tell what you've dreamt? If you slept at night, can, can anyone tell what you dreamt? No one can tell. Now the king is asking the magicians and the fortune tellers and the wise men to tell him his dream. And they were all troubled. They were telling the king, they were, they were asking the king, please tell us your dream so that we can explain what your dream meant. And the king tells them, I said I've forgotten. Tell me my dream. If you don't tell me my dream, I'm going to ask all the soldiers to burn all your houses into ruins. So the wise men were also scared. But remember among the wise men, there was a man called Daniel. Daniel was a God-fearing man. Okay? Remember in the city of Babylon, all these people are not God-fearing people apart from Daniel and his three friends. Okay? Are we together? Yes. Now the wise men are scared. The king tells them, can you go away? You're busy asking me, asking me what my dream is. You're buying time so that you can probably discuss and come up with something and you lie to me. I don't want your lies. I want you to tell me what my dream was about. The wise men were confused. So he told Arioch, you're going to kill all these men. Now when Daniel was moving around, he saw that there was a lot of confusion. He asks Arioch, Arioch was the commander-in-chief, and he asks Arioch, what is the problem? What is happening? And Arioch tells him, today you're dead. All of you are dead. All of you are? Dead. You guys are happy. I cannot see. When someone says you're going to die, you know? So Arioch tells Daniel, all, all of you are going to die because you're the wise men and the king wants an answer from you and you cannot give him what he wants. So all of you are going to die. So Daniel tells Arioch, he asks Arioch, please do us a favor. Give us three days. Okay? Give us how many days? Three days. So Daniel runs to his friends. He goes back home. He goes to his friends. He had three special friends. His friends were, uh-huh, Shadrach, uh huh. Uh huh. And he had three friends. There is one thing that was so different about these three people. They were all God fearing. They were all God what? Fearing. They believed in the one and true God who lives where? In heaven. So Daniel and his friends knelt down on their knees and they fasted for how many days? Three days. What did God do? What did God do when they prayed? What did God do? Yes? God showed them that he was his dream. God answered their prayer. Okay? When we pray, God listens. When we pray, God does what? He listens. God listens. When we pray, God does what? He listens. 
listens. God listens. God listened to the prayer of Daniel and his special friends. They fasted and prayed for three days. And God showed the dream, revealed the dream. So now Daniel had to go to the king. He calls Ariosh and tells him, Ariosh, come, my friend. God has revealed a dream to me. The only God that I worship, the God in heaven, has revealed a dream to me. So I need to go to the king. I need to go to King Nebuchadnezzar. I need to tell him what he dreamt. So the commander-in-chief, Mr. Ariuch, comes and tells Daniel, Okay, I'll take you. They march. They go to the palace. They knock on the palace doors. Okay? The, door, the, door, the doors were open to the palace. So Daniel and Ariuch come into the palace. And Ariuch comes and tells the king, Your majesty, I have the wise man here. His name is Daniel. His name is what? He's ready to tell you your dream. And the king says, Are you serious? Daniel is here to tell me my dream. Yet all the wise men fail. I need to listen. So they tell Daniel, please come in. And Daniel comes. Your majesty, may you live longer. I've come to tell you your dream. And Daniel starts telling who? The king, his dream. This was the dream. On that night that the king slept, he had a dream of a statue, of a man standing, but it was a statue. Okay, you see this image? This image had a head. Its head was made of? Gold. Gold. And the chest was made of? Silver. It was made of silver. And the thighs were made of? Bronze. Were made of bronze. And the legs were made of? Iron. Iron. The iron. legs were made of iron. And the feet were made of? Clay mixed with iron. iron. And in that dream, a very huge stone came and hit this image or this statue, and it all became ash. And all the ash disappeared. That was the dream that the king had. Now, Daniel explains this dream to the king and tells him all the meaning of all the different parts of this body, of, of parts of the, bo of the body of the statue. He went ahead and told him, you see, great king, according to this dream, according to this dream, the head of gold is your kingdom. The head of God is your, the head of gold is your what? Kingdom. Is the kingdom of Babylon. Babylon is a very powerful city. It is a very powerful place. You know, Babylon was a very rich country where people would go and buy all sorts of things. It had all the beautiful trees. It had all the iron workshops. It had everything that people from different cities would come and buy. Daniel interprets the dream to the king. And when he tells the king about the statue, he explains and tells him that the head of gold meant uh, that the, the kingdom of Babylon was a very powerful kingdom. King Nebuchadnezzar was very happy. Once he was told that the head of gold implied that Babylon was a very powerful kingdom. It was very powerful in a way that different cities came to trade and buy things from Babylon. So this really made Babylon a very powerful nation. It also had metal workshops where they would make swords. Okay? We had very many soldiers. They had a very powerful army. So the head of gold meant that um, Babylon was a very powerful nation. This really made Nebuchadnezzar very happy. He was very happy. So Daniel went on explaining other parts of the body of the statue. But what made the king happy was the head of gold. So because the king was happy, he actually even rewarded Daniel for having interpreted his dream. But Daniel told him, the person who helped me interpret that dream and get to know what he had, what he dreamt about, was the only God that we worship, the God of heaven. Okay? Now the king was so happy and he even told Daniel, I'm going to reward you. He even told people, you people, you should even start praying to the king of Daniel. Because he's a very powerful God. He can even interpret dreams that we have, that even other people cannot interpret. Daniel's, uh, Daniel's God is a very powerful God. And they were all, um, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was very happy. Okay? Daniel was rewarded. Okay? He was given one of the posts in Nebuchadnezzar's um, government, okay, kingdom. Now, because the king was so happy, he forgot about Daniel's powerful God. He called his men. You know, they also used to smelt, they used to make gold in the 
the city of Babylon. So he calls men and tells them, you know what? I want you to make this statue that I had, that I had in my dream that Dan Daniel interpreted. Please make it out of gold. Because I would like us to worship this statue. Nebuchadnezzar was not a, a God-fearing man. Okay? He didn't believe in God. So he calls his men and tells them, can you make this statue out of gold? The way Daniel described it, please go and make that statute from gold. I want it and you're going to put it in a plain of Dura so that everyone can worship it. Everyone obeyed the king, even his immediate men. So they go and they make this statute. They smelted gold and they molded this statute out of gold. And they placed it in the plain of plain of the plain of Dura. Now the king instructs and tells everyone, if you hear a trumpet, if you hear a drum, if you hear a cymbal, if you hear any kind of musical instrument, if you hear the sound of any musical instrument, please bow down and worship that idol. Bow down and worship the what? The idol. He told everyone, he gave the instructions, everyone in Babylon is going to worship the idol. So they put the idol in the plain of Dura, somewhere there where everyone could see it. And they called everyone together in the plain of Dura. And all the people came, including the friends of Daniel, the, wise, the wisest friends of who? Of Daniel. What were their names? Misha and Abednego. They all came. Okay? Now, all the musical instruments were played. The drums, the cymbals, the trumpets, all kinds of musical instruments. I believe even the violins were there in those days. Even these whatever's, the xylophone, eh? the guitars, uh -huh. which other ones? The trumpet, uh -huh, that one. All of them, once they were played, all people had to bow down and worship them. The idol. Remember Daniel and his friends worshipped the God where? Do you think they bowed down? No. Do you think they bowed down? No. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego never bowed down. They remained standing. They remained what? Stand. Now the king was wondering because he was seated up somewhere and he was wondering, he was asking, did you blow all the trumpets? Did you blow all the cymbals? Did you play the violins? All the the, 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 the the tambolins, the guitars, the flutes. How come I can see some people, the guitars? How come I can see some people standing? And the soldiers were like, Your Majesty, we also don't know. And the king gave an instruction. Can you play the instruments again? And they played the instruments again. But Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego refused to bow down. Why did they refuse to bow down? Hands up. Why did they refuse to bow down? Yes. Yes. Because they never worshipped idols. Whom did they worship? Whom did they worship? God, the only true God in heaven. We do not worship idols because we worship the God in heaven because worship the god where heaven. in heaven so they refused to bow down when they refused to bow down the king was very angry the king was very what angry. can you show me how an angry king looks like jemima aha uh -huh, that's how an angry king looks like but you're smiling what does he look like aha uh -huh, king nebuchadnezzar was angry and he called his soldiers in fact he just clapped his hands and they all ran and they came. Yes, your majesty. Can you go and bring those three men to me? Remember, there was also a punishment. Anyone who would not worship that, 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 that idol in the plain of Dura was going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. A fiery what? Furnace. A fiery furnace. So the soldiers ran and they grabbed the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they took them to the king. And the king asked them, why aren't you bowing down? And they say, Your Majesty, we respect you, but we do not worship. We do not worship idols. idols. We do not worship what? Idols. We only worship the true God who is where? 
Heaven. Who is in heaven? And the king said, We worship the king in heaven. We'll see. He told his men, Can you make that fiery furnace seven times hotter than it is now? Seven times? Seven times? Hotter. Seven times hotter. So they put more firewood, more firewood, more firewood. Even the soldiers who were near that, that fiery, fun, fiery furnace died just standing near it. Now the king instructs and says, Is it seven times hotter? They say, Yes, Your Majesty. Can you get the three boys who say they worship their God in heaven and we see if their God is going to help them? So they grabbed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and they threw them in the fiery what? The fiery what? Furnace. And the king even laughed and said, Ha ha ha, we'll see. They think they have a God. You know, he already forgot that the, that the God who showed him his dream is the same God that these people worship. Okay? So, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into a what? Into a fiery furnace. It was burning. It was seven times hotter. It was red hot. You know, fire that is red. Now they are thrown into the fire. And the king is waiting to see the ashes. Okay? Now, as the king is seated in his uh, chair, waiting to see people burning, as they are bowing down to the idol, he's also looking at the fiery furnace. And he looks at the fiery furnace. He's wondering. He says, he asks Arioch, Arioch, come here. Didn't you throw those men in the fire? Yes, your majesty. But how come? I can still see them. Can't you see them? Can't you see them in the fiery furnace? Arioch says, yes, your majesty, I can see them. The king says, no, I think I have a problem. Let me scratch my eyes. The king scratches his eyes. And he's so surprised to even see a fourth person. He asks Arioch, Arioch, did you throw three people in the fiery furnace? And Arioch says, yes, your majesty. But how come there are four people? We can see in, the, in our picture that King Nebuchadnezzar was very startled. And even Arioch is here. And they see a fourth person. And the fourth person is standing behind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who do you think that person was? Who do you think that person was? Yes, Letitia? It was Jesus. It was who? Jesus. Jesus came and saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why do you think Jesus came and saved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Who has an answer for us? Yes, Jemima. Because they didn't worship the idol. Yes, Elroy? Because they were God-fearing. Yes? Rachel? Because they pray to God. God listens when we pray. God listens when we what? We pray. God listens when we pray. And I will always pray. Can you say, I will always pray? I will always pray. When we pray, God answers our prayers. Just like he answered the prayer of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Did they get burned? They never got burnt when they when they were in the fiery furnace. What do we have to say? Amen. What do we say? Amen. God says, I will not fear. Can you say? God says. God, God says, says. I will not fear. I will not fear. We shouldn't fear because we learned about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and what they went through. God was there for them. In life, we go through a lot of things as children. But God is always there to protect us from any, any bad, any bad, um, any challenges in life. Okay? So we have to put our trust in him. We have to pray. Okay? Because he saves. He does what? Saves. And that is the end of my story. Thank you, Aunt Esther, for that wonderful story. You're welcome and may God bless you. Um, right now we have an activity that we're going to do. This is an activity of uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And we have Jesus right behind them. Please remember to color this picture very well and keep it so that uh, you can remember how Jesus saved Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Teacher Esther is going to give out the one.